Welcome. Welcome to the Alyosha Society, my friends. Right here we are pursuing truth, beauty, and goodness through great literature. Let me begin by trying to clear up something that uh, could potentially be very confusing. Uh, I originally planned on making five videos for the screw tape letters. And then I made the videos and I thought, you know, we need an intro video. Yeah, this is going to be a video where I want to talk to you about how to read screw tape. And it wouldn't have made any sense to do it at the end. It makes more sense for this to be the very, very, very first thing that you see about screw tape. But the video, the videos after this are all going to say, hey, this is video number one. Well, video number one is actually video number two. Video number three is four. It's just going to be a little confusing. I'll try to find a good way to label them on the on the site. Okay, so it's not so confusing, but it is what it is. Uh, I, I think it's better to have a little bit of confusion and get this video in because I think this is going to be a really important one. Okay, let's get right to it. And I think you'll see what I mean when I share with you what I'm going to be sharing with you in this video. And we're off. So in the next video, which I thought was going to be video number one, I'll be giving you all of the biographical information on C.S. Lewis and when he lived and what he did and why that's important in understanding the screw tape letters. So all that is coming. This is more of a big picture, uh, how to approach this extremely unique book. You're not going to read that many books like this one. And I want to prepare you for it. Okay. So first of all, what exactly is this? Well, if you're not familiar with the screw tape letters, this is, first of all, we'll talk later what an epistolary novel means, but it's a novel that is uh, made up entirely of letters. Sometimes epistolary novels have letters going back and forth, but in this case, the letter is always, of course, this is fictional, but it's also very real in a, in a deeper sense. An elder demon, a demonic entity named Screwtape, is writing letters to his understudy, his protege, let's call him, his nephew, Wormwood. And since demons, of course want to ruin our lives and destroy us, he is giving Wormwood advice on how to do everything to bring the maximum amount of pain and disruption into the patient's life. I think I agreed in a later video that we're going to call him Jeff. <laughs> okay. I just felt like I needed a name for him. So, Friends, uh, you got to keep that in mind when you read this book, because everything that is stated as good is actually bad, because it's coming from a demon. And everything that is stated as bad is actually good. It reminds me of the famous passage in Isaiah that I have on the slide there that uh, it's famously quoted by John the Baptist. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, bitter for sweet and sweet for uh, bitter. Isaiah is saying here, woe to those who get it all backwards because God has revealed himself. God has made it very clear what truth is, what beauty is, what goodness is, and woe to those who flip them around and say that the opposite is true. Well, that, that's what screw tape is doing here. Why would, why would a Christian read something like this? Friends, why would a Christian not read something like this? Friend, you know, it, it's like it's like going to the Super Bowl and, and playing in the Super Bowl and having the entire playbook of the other team. It's like going to battle and knowing exactly what your enemy is going to do and when he's going to do it and how he's going to do it. Friends, that's invaluable. 
that can help us draw closer to God, our relationship with him and recognize deception and lies. So it's very valuable what C.S. Lewis is doing here. But if you don't know that going in, then, you know, this can mess with your head a little bit. So please keep that in mind. And, and we'll be walking through the book and uh, hitting some highlights and so forth in, in later lessons. But I wanted to clear that up. And I just thought this was such a great opportunity to kind of make bookends to the Great Books 3 course, because I began this course with the Pilgrim's Progress, and I began with this very slide. I kind of doctored it up a little bit since we are uh, now doing the Screw Safe Letters. But I said to you, friends, when you read the Pilgrim's Progress, I want you to read it, and I use the word devotionally, devotionally. So you read it and you say, what does this story say? But you don't stop there like you might for some books. You say, what does it mean to me? Not Billy, not Susie, not the guy down the street, not somebody else, me. So friends, listen, it, when you're reading the screw tape letters, D don't don't worry about how you think it would apply to the culture or the person who sits three pews in front of you at church. No, 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 you, don't do that. That's the very that's the very deception I believe that the demonic forces would want you to do is to read this and say, "Oh man, this is really cool. So and so should read it." No, 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 you're reading it. You're reading it, and you're asking the question. How am I potentially deceived by these lies? And what should I do about it? But here's the thing. I'm going to remind you of what I said at the beginning of the Pilgrim's Progress lesson, when I said it's important to keep the two in bed. What do I mean by the two? What two? Well, the content and then the application of the content. So if you'll remember way back when, I gave you this famous quote that I got out of uh, John Stott's commentary on the book of Romans. He's actually quoting someone else, but he said, watch out for these extremes. We must be equally aware of two things, an undevotional theology on the one hand and an untheological devotion on the other. Let's make sure we understand what each of these things is. Your theology, the way I'm using the word theology here is the, the meat or the content or the truths about God or the Bible. Just the bare, the bare truths. Devotion, the way we're using the word devotion here is like, what do you do with it? How do you apply it to your life? And what Stott is saying is that you can't, you can't, you gotta have both and you can't go you know, off the, the side of the road on either one of these. You can't just do the theology and not the devotion and vice versa. Well, Stott uh, talks about what is the result of this. And he says, okay, on the one hand, what would it look like if you had your theology right, but you don't have any devotion? In other words, you have an undevotional theology. Well, Stott says, that's just bare knowledge. That's just cold, dead, bare knowledge. And that's no good. That's not what we want. Well, he says, okay, well, then what would what would happen if you had the other extreme? What if you had your devotion? So I'm I'm passionate and I'm dedicated, but I don't really care about theology. You know, I just love Jesus. Stott says, nope, because that is actually potentially idolatrous. What does he mean by that? Well, if you're passionate and emotional and devoted to a God about whom you know nothing, friends, who is this God you're crazy about? It's very likely some entity or idea or feeling or emotion that is not consistent with the God of the Bible, which makes it idolatry. You see the point. You've got to have both your theology, and devotion. Uh, another way of saying it, uh, we said back in the Pilgrim's Progress, is there can be no doxology without theology. So doxology, 
I'm using it in a similar way as I was using devotion earlier, but doxology literally means worship of God. So your passion, your application, your worship needs to be in line with your theology. Your worship and your passion should emanate and, and be a result or a byproduct of the truth that you know about God, that is your theology. So there can be no doxology without theology, and there can be no theology without doxology. Otherwise, you're just an egghead, you know, sitting in your ivory tower, you know, seminary professor, whatever. Look, I always pick on seminary professors, but you kind of have the, the mindset of all I'm really interested in are fancy pants terms and big truths. I don't really care how they apply in my life. You got to have both. And that brought us to Silhouette Man. Do you remember Silhouette Man? Yes, Silhouette Man. So Silhouette Man, if you forgot, or maybe you're you're only watching the videos here for screw tape and you have no idea what crazy stuff I'm referring to. Okay, Silhouette Man says, okay, I understand this content up here in my head, this theology. But once again, it can't end there. It cannot end there. It has to move to, and I got to figure out, speaking of moving, where to put myself. It has to move to the heart. Do I embrace it here in my heart? So I, I understand it here. This is just bare bones content. But then do I lean on it, rely on it, embrace it? here in, 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 in the very core of my being, but it actually still can't end there because that has to flow into living it out of my life. So I can understand it and embrace it, but I still need to walk it out with my feet. I put feet, it's just, it's just a metaphor. Okay, you know, we use the, the term walking out your faith, you know, walk the talk and so forth. So understanding, head, heart, feet, head, heart, feet, got to have all three. So what is true faith? Biblically speaking, what is true faith? It's understanding the truth, knowing the truth, embracing that truth, but then walking it out. James talks about the fact that, it, you know, if, if you say that you have faith, but you don't have the works, you know, James chapter two then it's it's all just baloney. Yeah, you didn't know you used the, the Greek word for baloney, did you? Yeah. Well, you got to have all three. And it's really important. So as you read screw tape, friends, I want you to ask yourself, what is Lewis trying to communicate here? How ha is it that I could potentially be deceived in this way? And then what then do I do about it? How do I live my life? How do I pray differently? How do I treat my neighbor differently? Whatever the case may be. All right. So that brings me to this. You're going to see the outline of videos in all the subsequent uh, videos. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to try to keep this, uh, you know, with the least amount of confusion as I can, but I've added what I'm calling the pre-book video. I'll figure out later how to label them, but uh, friends, I, I'm I'm excited that we're going to be doing screw tape together. I'm excited that we're going to be looking at the enemy playbook. Uh, you know, we started with the Pilgrim's Progress, where we saw sort of our own playbook. You know, and Christians going through this adventure, and now we're gonna now we're gonna end the course by taking a look at C.S. Lewis's The Screw Tape Letters, uh, friends. Thanks for hanging out with me here. And so I'll see you in the next video. Blessings.